JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 10th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but, one, all but one of the other major currencies on Thursday during the Asian session Friday. It gained the most versus CAT, AUD and the Euro, while it lost ground only versus the Japanese Yen. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar and the Japanese Yen, combined with the weakness of the risk-linked Looney and Aussie, suggests that the financial community may have traded in a risk-off uh, manner. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that European shares slipped ahead of uh, the ECB decision, uh, with investors uh, avoiding adding uh, to their exposures due to uh, high speculation that the bank will signal a stronger than previously suggested um, rate path. Indeed, uh, the bank uh, kept uh, all three of its um, of its main interest rates unchanged, as was widely expected, and said that it would hike rates next month, the first liftoff since 2011, followed by a perhaps bigger increase in September. This added credence to the view of those seeing a 75 basis points increase by September, as it could mean a quarter point hike in July, and doubling that in uh, September. And that's why we saw the Euro initially rallying. But why was it found among the three main losers this morning? A currency came under strong selling interest after ECB President uh, Christine Lagarde referred to the problem of fragmentation, which refers to the divergence between the economic state and especially borrowing costs uh, of uh, different uh, European countries. So, she referred to the problem of fragmentation, but she fell short of providing a clear roadmap on how they are planning to address the issue. She just said that they will adopt uh, new, in new instruments if needed, but she gave no further details. Investors may have become concerned that although Safe Haven Germany could handle higher interest rates, debt-laden debt debt countries like Italy and Greece could fall into recession. That's maybe why we saw the euro falling so sharply in, in the aftermath of, um, of the decision. Now, those economic concerns may have been the reason behind the slide in the safe haven yen. Remember that the yen has been weakening rapidly up until yesterday, even when stocks were sliding, but this was due to the huge monetary policy divergence between the Bank of Japan and other major central banks like the Fed. Now that fears over economic growth have been uh, revived, the currency wore its uh, safe heaven soon again. The negative sentiment uh, continued during the US session and was rolled over into Asia today with investors anxiously, anxiously awaiting the US CPIs for the month of uh, May due out later today. The headline rate is expected to have held steady at 8.3% year over year but the core one is seen declining to 5.9% from 6.2%. This could revive some speculation over a post-summer uh, pause, and if not a pause, a slowdown in the Fed's uh, hike path. However, in our view, it is too early to say with certainty uh, something uh, like that. After all, the Fed appears committed to deliver two uh, more double hikes in June and July, and as for the subsequent meetings, we will get a lot more data before arriving to safer conclusions. Even officials themselves noted that uh, their prior gathering, 
according to the minutes that it is too early to be confident that inflation has already peaked. So we prefer to take things day by day. The dollar could slide somewhat in case of a slowdown in inflation, but on the first fresh sign that inflation could turn up again, or fresh comments, uh, fresh comments dismissing the likelihood of a, uh, of a post summer break by the Fed, the currency could um, uh, could turn up again. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, another top uh, tier data on the economic agenda today is Canada's employment report for May. The unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at 5.2%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 24,000 jobs, more than the 15.3 thousand added in April. At last week's gathering, the Bank of Canada hiked by 50 basis points, its second double hike in a row, taking its benchmark rate to 1.5%. That said, this was largely anticipated and fully priced in. In our view, the most important takeaway from this gathering was that the bank reiterated its willingness to act more forcefully if needed. So with that in mind, this employment report could allow the LUNI to recover some of yesterday's lost ground. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. However, at this point, I have to let you know that there will be no weekly Market Outlook webinar this Monday on June the 13th. So, but still you can register for uh, the next one, for the next Monday. Uh, on June the 20th. You can find the link in the description below. So, bye. Have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week on Tuesday for the Daily Market Review. JFT, just fair and direct.